Hello and welcome to today's science lesson. So first of all guys, can we all turn to wave and say a big hello to our friends on camera. Hello. Hello. And we'll begin by doing our meditation sequence. So I will sit down, take two fingers, find our heart center, left hand on our laps and close our eyes. When you're ready, guys, you can open your eyes and come back to the room. Excellent. And next we'll do our stretch sequence. So let's stand up and push in our chairs. And let's begin by stretching up high. High to the sky. High as we can. And then let's go down low. Touch your toes. Let's go back up high. And this time, can we go tippy toe high? And when we're there, let's have a wave. And then back down to touch our toes. And now, let's stand up straight. Shake it out, guys. Arms and legs, shake it out. Shake it out. Shake it out. Now, let's do some rotations. Left, right. Left, right. Left, right. Left, right. Left, right. Left, right. Excellent. Now, let's take our right hand and touch our left foot. Left hand, right foot. Right hand, left foot. Left hand, right foot. Right hand, left foot. Left hand, right foot. Right hand, left foot. Left hand, right foot. Very good. And to finish, we're going to do five star jumps. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent, guys. Have a seat. So in our previous science lesson, we were learning about different objects in our solar system. And we were learning about one object in particular. 
Does anybody remember the name of the big ball of energy? Excellent. The big ball of energy in the sky that heats our planet is called the sun. So what we're going to do now as a brief recap is I will do some of the different planets that we have in our solar system and we'll do them moving away from the sun. So first of all, we need our big ball of energy. How do we spell sun, guys? Perfect. Now, who can remember how many different planets do we have in our solar system? Any ideas? Excellent prayer, we have eight. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw eight planets moving further and further away from the sun. Now it's important to bear in mind these aren't actual size diagrams, they're just objects in relation to distance from the sun. And what we're going to do is we'll do an exercise to name them one more time. So who can remember guys, does anybody remember the name of the closest planet to the sun, beginning with M, and therefore the hottest one? Mercury, excellent. How do we spell Mercury guys? M-E-R-C-U-R-Y, Mercury. Okay, planet number one is Mercury, and that's the planet closest to the sun. Let me just do the M again there. Okay, so now we're onto the second planet from the sun, beginning with V. Venus. Venus, excellent. After Mercury, we have Venus. V E N U S. Okay, now planet number three. Now everybody should know about planet number three. <laughs> yes, it's the planet we are on now. It's our planet. So that planet again? Earth. Earth, yes. So can anybody help me spell planet Earth? A. E. A. R. T. H, excellent, our planet. I told you everybody would know. <laughs> so, so far we have Mercury, Mercury. Venus, Venus. Earth. Earth. But who can tell me what planet comes after Earth? Sometimes known as the red planet. Again, beginning with M. Mars. Mars. M. A. R. S. Mars. Okay, Mars is the next planet. And then, following Mars, does anybody remember the planet that we said had sort of like an eye? When you look at this planet, it has like an eye on the front. Jupiter, yes, beginning with J. It's a very large planet. Too big for me to draw on the board. It's a lot bigger than this. It would be like this size. And it has an eye on the front. Jupiter. How do we spell Jupiter, guys? U-P-I-T-E-R. Jupiter. Excellent. And then our next planet in the solar system is very distinctive. Does anybody remember the planet that had lots of rings around it? Remember when we done the pictures and there was one planet with rings all around, beginning with S. Saturn, yes, well done, we have Saturn, S-A-T-U-R-N. So, so far we have the Sun, then we have Mercury, Venus, our planet called Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and now we're getting very far away from the sun. We're getting to our very cold planets. These planets are blue usually in color because they're like big balls of ice. Does anybody know what the next planet after Saturn is? 
Uranus. Yes, it's quite a hard word to say, so let's practice together. Uranus. Yes, a planet called Uranus. U R A N U S. Uranus. And the final planet in the solar system, N E P T U N E. Neptune. So all together one more time guys, Mercury, Mercury. Venus, Venus, Earth, Earth Mars, Mars, Saturn, Saturn Uranus, Uranus and Neptune. And where do these planets consist of? They are in our solar system. So solar, S-O-L-A-R. Solar refers to sun. Solar is the power or the heat or the energy that comes from the sun. That's why when you hear solar power, it's powered by the sun. But we call our body of planets solar system. Okay? The eight planets that orbit around the sun are known as the solar system. And did you know, up until a few years ago, there wasn't eight planets, there was nine. There was another planet called Pluto. But people decided Pluto was so small that it was too small to be a planet. So now it's just known as a piece of rock in outer space. But ten years ago, there would be another planet here called Pluto. But now it's being degraded to a piece of space rock. But that was excellent, guys. Very well done. So that was a brief recap of the previous lesson when we looked at the sun and the solar system in general. And we're going to continue looking at the sun today, but we're going to look at it in a different way. We're going to look at our sun in effect it has on our planet, planet Earth in relation to another planetary body, which isn't a planet, but it's something that orbits around our planet. At night time, guys, what do you see? Do you see the sun? You see the moon. Excellent. At night time, the sun will fall. We call this sunset. And, and then, what will you see in the sky? The moon. So what we're going to do in today's lesson is we're going to look at the relationship between the sun and the moon and the effect that it has on our planet Earth in relation to two distinctive types, daytime and nighttime. So now guys, I'd like you all to turn to look at the TV screen because we have a PowerPoint presentation about the rising and setting of the sun and moon. So now we can say it together, the rising, the rising and, setting and setting of the sun, of the sun and, moon. and moon. Let's take a look guys. So let's take a look at our PowerPoint presentation, the rising, the rising and, setting and setting of the sun, of the sun. and moon. Yes. Now what can you see in this picture, guys? Can you see lots of moons? How many? Five. One, two, three, four, five. That's because we don't really have five moons. We only have one. This is what's known as a time-lapse photograph, where a picture is taken of the same object over a series of time events. And what it does, it helps you understand how the moon will rise in the sky and then it will fall. Similar, at daytime, the sun will rise in the morning and set in the evening. And what we're going to look at today is the different time periods when the moon and the sun will rise and fall. So in the morning, the sun 
comes up in the east. Okay, always in the east. We call this sunrise. Yes, in the morning when the sun comes up from the east, we call it sunrise because the sun is rising. In the evening, the sun goes down in the west. Okay? So remember, rises in the east, does a full cycle, and then goes down in the west. And what do we call this? Not sunrise. We call this sunset. Sun rises... Sunrise. Sunset. Sunset. Yes. You can see here, this is similar to a time-lapse photograph, but it's a diagram. Now what you can see are the different times of day. Like very early in the morning, what time is this? 5 a.m. The sun is just starting to appear but it will still be very low. It will be rising above buildings because it's rising from the east. But at 5 a.m., very low in the sky, you might just be able to see the top. But then, by 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m., the sun has risen some more. By now, 8 a.m., you should be able to see the sun in the sky. Okay, and then we have 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m., and then by midday, 12 p.m., the sun is usually at its highest point in the sky. So at about 12 p.m., midday, or certainly 1 p.m., the sun is at its highest point. What happens to the sun after it reaches its highest point? It begins to fall. Yes. You can see here, by 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., the sun is still in the sky, but it's already beginning to drop. It's beginning to set. And then, by late in the evening, 6 p.m., 7 p.m., it disappears from view. Now, when the sun disappears from view, what other planetary object comes into the sky? The moon. Well done. Sometimes, at certain times of the day, it's possible to see both in the sky at the same time. That'll be when the sun is setting and the moon is rising. I remember about two months ago, I seen the sun and the moon at the same time. That'll be when the sun is setting and the moon is rising. Okay? When the sun sets, when the, sun sets the, moon the moon rises. Yes. What can you see in the sky now? Is it daytime? Daytime. No, no it's not daytime. It's night time. If it's daytime, what can you see in the sky? The, su the sun. If it's daytime, we see the sun. If it's night time, and sometimes, and, and stars, yes. Especially in Chiang Rai, lots of beautiful stars at night time. If you look up into the sky at night time, you see lots of stars. Because no air pollution. The moon will look different depending on its position. Yes. If you can see all of the moon, what do we call this? Does anybody know? A special occasion we can see the whole of the moon. Full moon. When we see the whole of the moon, we see the full moon. 
But at other times in the lunar calendar, we just see parts of the moon. And this is known as crescent moon. Because other objects, shadows, fall in front of the moon. Sometimes the moon moves in front of the sun to create a solar eclipse. Yes, this is when it goes very dark. Because imagine we have the sun here and then the moon in front. So the moon is blocking the light from the sun. A solar eclipse, it will go dark. And sometimes the earth moves in front of the moon to create a lunar eclipse. This is when we call the earth in front of the moon the other side of the sun. And what colour can you see the moon is, guys? Red. Yes. This is why the moon is sometimes referred to as the red object too. Mars, the red planet. The moon, the red object. And did you know that the moon controls the tides of the sea? Yes. When you go to the seaside, what happens to the water? When you go to the seaside, what happens to the water? Moves in, moves out. Moves in, moves out. Do you know why it moves in and out? The moon pulls the water. The magnetic field from the moon makes the tides of the sea move in and out. Any questions, guys? No. Okay, that was excellent. Well done. <laughs> Welcome back to class. We hope your students enjoyed the PowerPoint presentation so that they can understand better about the different times of day and the effects the sun and the moon has on daylight and nighttime through rising and setting. And we've got a board activity to do ourselves soon so our students can demonstrate the arc the sun makes when it rises and sets. Well, first of all, guys, time for the stretch sequence. So let's stand up and push in our chairs. And I think for this sequence, we'll play a game. We'll have a game of teacher says. So listen carefully. If teacher says, we can do. If teacher doesn't say, don't do. Okay? So, touch your shoulders. Teacher didn't say, listen carefully. Hands on hips. Teacher didn't say. Teacher says, hands on head. Teacher says, touch your knees. Stand up straight. <laughs> Teacher says, stand up straight. Teacher says, stand on one leg. Teacher says, swap legs. Teacher says, swap legs. Swap again. Well done, well done. Okay, stand up. Teacher never said. <laughs> okay, teacher says, stand up straight. Arms in the air. Teacher says, arms in the air. Arms down. <laughs> Listen carefully. Okay, teacher says, arms down. Turn around. Teacher says, turn around. Teacher says, back the other way. Back the other way. <laughs> Teacher says, down into a little ball. Five, four, three, two, one, jump. Teacher says, jump. Okay, and teacher says, sit down. 
And now it's time for our flashcards activity where students can demonstrate their understanding of the various times of day when the sun will rise and the sun will set. So teachers, what you'll need to do is print off the flash sheet for this lesson and cut the suns into individual items. And what we're going to do is we'll draw a time lapse across the bottom of the board and at the various times we'll ask our students to come forward and demonstrate the position of the sun in the sky in relation to rising and falling. So first of all guys, in the morning, what sort of times do we wake up? 6 a.m. is roughly about the first time in the morning, so we'll write 6 a.m. 6 a.m. And then let's do it in stages of around three hours. So 6 a.m., 7, 8, 9 a.m. 9 a.m. And then three hours on from 9 a.m., we move into. Not a.m., we move into p.m., okay? Once we reach lunchtime, it's 12 p.m. And now we're into p.m., okay? And after three hours of p.m., it will be not one, not two, 3 p.m. Excellent. 3 p.m. And then after another three hours, it will be 6 p.m. 6 p.m. And then what we'll do, we'll have one time at night time too to demonstrate when the sun has left us until the next day. So, three hours on from 9 p.m. Okay. So one more time, guys. We begin with 6 a.m. 9 a.m. 12 p.m. p.m. 3 p.m. 9 uh, 6 p.m. And finally, 9 p.m. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask my students to close their eyes. And when they wake up, one of them will have a sun on their desk. They will come and place the sun in relation to where they think it is in the sky at 6 a.m. So let's see who can go first. Okay, guys, we can open our eyes. And the first person with the sun is Prel. So Prel, come and join me at the front, please. And can you show your friends your sun? It's a nice happy sun in the sky. So what we're going to do now, or Prel is going to demonstrate, where will the sun be in the sky at 6 a.m. in the morning? So Prel, 6 a.m., what do you think? Will the sun be high in the sky then? No, it's just beginning to rise. So as Prel has correctly demonstrated, the sun will be very low in the sky because it's just beginning to rise in the morning. Prel, excellent. High five. Big round of applause for Prel. And teachers, what you can do now is you can pause the video and you can do the same activity with your students in your class. Just remember to choose a different student each time. And then at the end, we'll have a good understanding and demonstration of a sunrise and a sunset. So guys, time for our next person to demonstrate 9 a.m. Let's close our eyes again. The 9 a.m. Who can we do? 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Let's open our eyes, guys. So now it's Nadia's turn. Nadia, come and join me at the front, please. So Nadia now has the sun. But now it's three hours later in the day. It's a bit later in the morning. So what will the sun have done now, guys? It will have risen. It's gone up by three hours. So Nadia, where in the sky do you think our sun will be? Perfect. You see what's happening. Our sun is rising in the sky 
as the hours progress. So now we are at 9 a.m. and the sun is risen. It's now fully in the sky. Nadia, that was excellent. High five, big round of applause for Nadia. And now our next students will demonstrate 12 p.m. midday. Okay guys, so now you can open your eyes. And now, who has the sun for midday? Now thinking back to our PowerPoint presentation, remember midday or around 1 p.m. is when the sun is highest in the sky. It's at the top of its rise. So Pak Boom, what do you think? Perfect! That's about as high in the sky as our sun will go. And as you can see, it's following the same trajectory from 6 a.m. It rises to 9 p.m. And from 9 p.m. to, sorry, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., it's continued to rise. And now it's at its highest point. So Pak Boong, that was excellent. Well done. Big round of applause for Pak Boong, guys. So now we need the students to demonstrate what we can do when our sun begins to fall. So next, we need a student to come forward and demonstrate 3 p.m. So let's see who that student can be. Okay, so now the sun is with Pat. So Pat can come forward and demonstrate the sun at 3 p.m. Now remember guys, the sun has already reached its highest point. Now it begins to fall. So Pat, looking at the trajectory from 6 a.m., 9 a.m., 12 p.m., it will now begin to drop. Where in the sky do you think it will be? Yes, about there, that's good. What's happening is our sun is beginning to set. It's beginning to drop in the sky. And at 3 p.m., it's already getting quite long. So, Pat, that was excellent. Well done. Big round of applause for Pat. And now, we'll carry on. Next, we need 6 p.m. Okay. Now, we can open our eyes, guys. And who has the flashcard? Down. Down is quite an apt name, because what's happening now is the sun is going down, and our student's name is Dan. <laughs> so Dan, 6 p.m. It's still light, but it's starting to get quite dark. So where do you think our sun will be at 6 p.m.? Excellent, yes. It's already fallen quite far in the sky. So what's happening now is our sun is taking a downward trajectory. Particularly in the winter months, in winter, it will probably already be dark by now. But Dan, that was excellent. High five, big round of applause for Dan. And we've got one more student to demonstrate what happens to the sun after it already goes dark. So, our final sun will go to Lakau. Lakau. You can come forward and join me now. So what do you think, guys? 9 p.m. It's already dark. So where will the sun be now? The sun will have disappeared. But no, no, it will be down here. The sun has disappeared from view completely. Because at 9 p.m., if we look in the sky, what can we see? Can you see the sun? No. No. What do you see? You see the moon. So the sun is already out of view. And what we have in the sky is the moon because it's nighttime. So Lakau, that was brilliant. Well done. And a big round of applause, guys. Well done. And now it's time for our worksheet part of the lesson. And for this activity, what we're asking our students to do is to draw a picture of representing sunrise. So remember guys, your first picture that you draw will be early in the morning when the sun is rising. 
And then, in our second box, the opposite time of day, when the sun is setting, which we call sunset. So we're asking our students to draw two pictures, one that represents sunrise, and another that represents sunset. So what do you need to do first, guys? Write our names on top. And give our students around 10 minutes for this activity so they can spend five minutes drawing each picture. And if they have time at the end, they can colour too. So to you, this one's for you. Nadia, for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Pat, this one's for you. You're welcome. Pak Bung, you're welcome. Ned, for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Down, here's yours. Bang Pong, for you. You're welcome. Plow, for you. You're welcome. And Lakgau, this one's for you. Okay, so two pictures, guys. The first picture you draw will be this time period, 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. midday. Sunrise. Okay, when the sun is rising in the sky. So you can draw any picture that you like, maybe of yourselves, that represents sun rising maybe on your way to school of a morning, because when you're traveling to school, the sun is rising. S-U-N-R-I-S-E. Sunrise. And then your second picture is the opposite time of day when the sun is setting, and we call sunset. So think about the two different times of day. Draw an activity that happens at sunrise, maybe eating breakfast, going to school, or playing with friends. And then, what happens in the evening when the sun is setting? We go home. So you could do travelling back from school, sitting with your friends on the school bus, or playing with friends. Or if it's the weekend, you might have other activities that you do. But it can be anything, guys, as long as it represents sunrise and sunset. So first one, sunrise. When the sun is coming up, what will you do, Chip, of a morning? What do you do at sunrise? Eat breakfast? Come to school? So you can draw a picture of yourself coming to school. And remember, excellent to see Nadia, Nadia's picture, the sun is low in the sky because the sun is still rising. Excellent, Pat, that's good. So at sunrise, the sun is still low. So 6 a.m., what do you do? At home, eat breakfast. So you can do eating breakfast. Yes. You can draw the picture of yourself eating breakfast. And then at sunset, we don't eat breakfast, we could eat dinner. Excellent, Lakau, that's beautiful. Now, I like your sun, nice and red. Very hot sun. So what's happening at sunrise with Pak Bung? What do you do at 6 a.m.? Yes, good idea. You can show yourself eating breakfast. Everybody likes to eat breakfast in the morning. And if you want, you can draw the different suns. You can show the stages of sunrise. And then, in your next blog, you can do sunset. Welcome back to class. We hope your students enjoyed the worksheet activity where they had to design their own pictures and drawings based on sunrise and sunset. And as you can see here, some of my students have done a great job. It's excellent work, guys. <laughs> and that's all we've got time for today. So we hope you've enjoyed the lesson, found it interesting, and now also understand the basic features of morning time when the sun will rise in the sky, which we call sunrise. And then, from afternoon to evening, when the sun has reached its highest point, and will then begin to set in the sky, which we call sunset. sunset. Excellent, guys. So can we all turn to wave and say goodbye? Goodbye. Bye-bye. 
See you all again soon.